I'm happy to be joined by Chris Young, the head coach and owner of Young's MMA right here in Bangor, as he gets ready for his fighters to compete this Saturday in Orono at NEF40. Chris, how are you? Not doing too bad. How are you, Ryan? Not bad at all. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, we got a lot to get to. Only four fighters competing on this card, which is a little bit of a disappointment because you had a couple more. I, I would like to start with the, the Ricky Dexter situation. I know he hasn't released too much information publicly, so I don't want to step on his toes and say anything that he doesn't want to be said. Uh, however, everyone you know, is disappointed that he had to withdraw from that fight with Josh Harvey. That was a monster rematch that everyone regionally here was really looking forward to. Uh, can you just tell me a little bit about, you know, I guess, what the mood is in the gym now and, and if we can expect to see Ricky at some point you know, back in the cage down the line? Um, well, honestly, um, you know, right now, Ricky's kind of going through a battery of tests. Um, to make sure his health is going to be good enough to be able to fight again. Um, and I'm not going to go into too many details. That's kind of up for him to, to discuss publicly if he chooses to. Um, so right now, uh, the future is a little bit uh, hazy. Um, he's still in the gym. He's still coming in, working with his clients or whatnot. He's just not able to really do any training right now until we have a better idea what's going on. And obviously, it was a, a big blow to the team. I mean, just the morale, I have to imagine, you know, kind of was was down a little bit because that was such a, uh, a highly publicized and anticipated fight. You know, if, if that fight did come to fruition as a professional, um, I, I know it's kind of a, a sticky situation for you to, to really give a prediction or anything like that. But d did you imagine this to be a much different fight than when they fought as amateurs for the belt? Did you, you think it would have been a little bit more competitive and maybe get into the second or third round? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, Ricky is not the same athlete he was uh, back then. Um, and look, it, at the end of the day, it's, it was a tough fight. It was a very tough fight. You know, it's, it's uh, Josh is a super capable athlete um, and is definitely going places in the sport. So it was, a, it was a really, really tough fight. But uh, I definitely think it was going to be closer than what I think Josh thought it was going to be. And, you know, Josh, you, you were his head coach for quite some time. I interviewed him and his new head coach, Primo Bellarosa, at the Sea Dog here. Uh, and they were very candid about, you know, where they're at right now. And they seem very happy to be working with one another. Can you just kind of put into words, you know, maybe why you came to the decision to, to, to move on from Josh and, uh, and what you do expect to see him doing in the sport maybe moving forward? You know, it's funny. A lot of people want to believe there was like some sort of animosity or some kind of like anger there. Um, it, a coaching fighting relationship is just like any relationship. Sometimes you vibe with people. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can kind of understand, you can speak to each other. Well, sometimes uh, things get lost in translation. Like the relationship has to be sound. Um, and I just felt like me and Josh just weren't vibing. And I think if he's being honest, I think he feels the same. Um, and sometimes you just have to say goodbye to that relationship. Um, I have no ill will towards Josh whatsoever. And Primo is a fantastic coach. I talk to Primo often. I, I go to him for advice. Um, I, Josh is in really good hands. Um, as far as where he's going to go, that's up to Josh. Like I, I really think that Josh is capable of going to the next level. Um, it's just going to be a matter of uh, whether he wants to. And the, uh, that's the only thing that's going to stop him is if he just decides he doesn't want to go there. Stylistically, what do you expect this fight with uh, Dominic Jones to look like? You know, um, I think it, if I was coaching Dominic, I think I'd be trying to get it to, you know, a clinching, grappling type situation as quick as possible because I think the biggest discrepancy is there in the striking. Um, Dom is a good athlete, and it'll be interesting to see. I don't know how uh, good a shape he's in. I don't know because obviously this was a last-minute fight on his part. Um, so it'll just depend on, on, you know, how well he was staying in shape, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, it's exciting. I mean, Dom had a really good amateur career. Uh, he's a talented wrestler. So it'll, it's, it's, it's an interesting fight. It's an interesting fight. Yeah, I'm sure glad that, that Matt Peterson uh, was able to, to find a replacement uh, in Dom Jones uh, for Josh Harvey because uh, that would have been that would have been a, a really difficult uh, fight to lose, the, the main event. Uh, so I'm glad that they were able to, to find a, a good replacement in, in Dom Jones. Let's talk a, a little bit about uh, Fred Lear. I, I spoke with him recently. He told me he's been coming in in the evenings to, to get most of his work in. How often are you getting a chance to, to work with Fred? I work with Fred a couple times a week. Um sometimes three 
Um, you know, Fred's one of those guys that, uh, you know, he's super busy right now. Um, you know, he's working multiple jobs. You know, got bills to pay. Um, I get it. So, um, you know, he's, he's putting in the work. I know he's working outside. You can tell by his body and the way he looks. He's obviously losing the weight. He's, he's in good shape. Um, so he's putting in the work outside of the gym as well. Um, so, you know, I feel really good about this matchup. And Fred lost his debut fight here as a professional. Uh, and I know it was pretty disappointing for him. And if I'm not mistaken, you were pretty disappointed uh, as well. Is this just one of those cases where he made a, a mental mistake and, and got caught? Or is it something deeper than that? Is it is it a conditioning factor or maybe not training enough? What, what do you think it was? Um, I think it's, it's with Fred, I think it's always going to be a little bit, uh, Fred beats himself. Um, you know, Fred is one of those guys that uh, this was what was interesting about that fight is uh, this was probably the first time that I could say that Fred didn't really show up. Fred has always been a game day guy when he, he it doesn't matter how much he trains at the gym uh, or what his performances look like in the gym. When he shows up in that cage, he's on. This was the first time that he was a little flat. Um, he didn't really look like, like himself. I think he still won the first round um, in that fight. Um, the guy made uh, the appropriate adjustments and uh, Fred wasn't able to keep up. Um, but I think it's just going to be a little bit of a lifestyle change. I think Fred start, has to start believing that this could be a career path for him. He has to start believing in himself and believing that uh, this is something he could, he could do. Um, and once he does that, I think we're going to see a whole other level of Fred. What, what's the heaviest he gets when, when he's not training? Because he's fighting at 135, but he's a pretty thick guy. I mean, he's not the tallest guy, but he's got tree trunks for legs. And I got to imagine, you know, fighting at 145, especially as a professional now, might be a problem for him against some of these guys that are taller and longer. Well, I think that's, that's it. Um, you know, on the regional scene, Fred could compete at 145. Um, but I think when you start getting up to the next level, um, stature wise you're going to be dealing with guys with a lot more reach um it's it's not a good weight class for him um so i think if he wants to take this serious i think uh 135 is where he has to be at the heaviest um but again that goes with the whole you know getting the lifestyle down you know this is is managing your weight is another whole aspect of the sport and it's not something that is should be kind of structured just around that last week or two of camp it's something you have to look at uh, over the long haul of your career. Um, so that in itself is a whole other level of discipline um, that, you know, I'm still trying to get ingrained in a lot of the guys. You know, one fight I was really looking forward to here uh, on Saturday, Chris, was uh, Victor Irwin uh, and uh, Buck Pineau. I mean, a couple of, of big men who throw a lot of uh, power behind their punches. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I'm finding out that this fight is now scrapped. What, what happened there? Can you elaborate? Uh Vic has been dealing with some back issues. Um, you know, we kind of started the camp with it. We were hoping that, you know, through stretching and, you know, chiropractic and, you know, massage and things like that, we kind of get them set. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And Vic is not the type of guy that complains about injuries or uh, anything bothering him. So when Vic comes to you and says that something hurts, it hurts. Um, so honestly, it was more my call. Uh, we knew what had to happen in this fight. This wasn't one of those fights that we could just be like, yeah, we'll just strike with the guy. Um, <laughs> we needed to take this fight to the ground. I think everyone knew that's where the fight needed to happen. Um, Buck is a, is a really talented striker. He had the reach. Um, it wasn't something that we were going to look to do is to swap with him. Um, and with Vic's back being in the shape it was in, we didn't feel really good about wrestling. Um, so I had to make that, that decision. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I wish Vic nothing but the best. Hopefully uh, he gets uh, back to 100% and maybe this fight can happen uh, at some point in one of the next uh, couple NEF cards. Uh, another fight, a uh, championship bout between uh, Jimmy Jackson and Tom Pagliarulo, amateur 145-pound title. That's a really exciting fight. Jimmy looked great in his last fight. And I remember talking to him before. He was, he was nervous. He hadn't stepped in the cage for a couple of years. And he went in there and really performed, you know, fantastically well for himself. How has Jimmy been looking so far in camp? And what kind of performance do you expect to see out of uh, Jimmy on Saturday night? Jimmy's been looking really good in camp. He's been putting in a really, really solid camp. Um, most people know he actually works at the gym. He coaches uh, my kids program. So he's here all the time. Um, he's been, you know, putting in the hard work, he, you know, when Ricky was still training, uh, he was putting in some hard rounds with Ricky. 
with Vic, um, you know, training with much bigger guys. Um, so there's no doubt we're going to see uh, probably the, the best version of Jimmy that we've seen. I mean, that's important because this is a really tough fight. You know, Tom is a talented uh, fighter, definitely an up and coming guy on the scene. Um, so we're going to have to have the best Jimmy Jackson in there um, if we're going to want to come out on top. But I think we're going to get it. You know, I, I spoke with Tom recently uh, in, a, in an interview here for Between Rounds Radio. And, you know, Tom is training down at Recon with guys like uh, Calvin Cater or Rob Font. I'm not sure if you've heard of, of who they are or not. But, you know, obviously the, the best of the best in New England. I mean, the, does that just make him, you know, does, does it, I guess, fast track him closer to being a professional when you're training with guys that are, you know, in the top 10, 15 in the, in the whole world, you know, fighting in the UFC. I mean, that's gotta be making them leaps and bounds better. Right. Uh, well, there's no doubt. It's not hurting you. Um, so it, it's definitely going to help. There's so many factors that come into, you know, developing an athlete, developing a fighter. Um, just because you do train with high level athletes doesn't mean you're getting the best training. Um, you know, sometimes when you're training with high level athletes, you tend to be a punching bag and maybe you're not getting the most attention from the coaches because they're more worried about the guy that's got a fight coming up in the UFC. Um, not saying that you can't gain a lot of, uh, you know, knowledge and skill through that process, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fast track. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, you know, there's no doubt that this is, this is the toughest fight that, that Jimmy's had in his career. There's no doubt. Um, and it's, it, it, I'm super excited to see, um, cause these are the fights that I get excited about because, you know, when we have to put together a game plan, we train for it, um, to see it play out, see it executed, uh, especially against a high level guy like Tom. Um, I'm really excited about this fight. Where do you feel like without giving away the game plan, I'm not asking you to do that, but where do you feel like Jimmy could, could really have some, uh, some big advantages in this fight? Do you think it, keeping it on the feet would benefit him or he's very skilled on the ground. Is this one of those fights where maybe he's going to use his jujitsu throughout the, throughout the fight? You know, I, I, the funny thing is, is I know Tom feels like he outclasses Jimmy um, in every area. Um, I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, I'll give him, I'll give him that he's got, you know, his pedigree in wrestling. Um, but Jimmy's not a bad wrestler, uh, especially when you're talking about MMA, it's not wrestling, you know, it's a different style. You know, you got to deal with punches, your distance is different. Um, and Jimmy is, is, is good at mixing it together. You know, he might not be, you know, if they were to go out on the wrestling mat and, and wrestle, uh, Tom's going to have an advantage, but this isn't wrestling. Um, this is a different thing. Um, I think Jimmy has his advantages in every area. You know, he's, he's got some areas in the striking that I think he's stronger than, than Tom in. Some areas on the cage, some of the jiu-jitsu. Um, so, again, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see um, how the game plan plays out. I'm really looking forward to that fight. Uh, one of the, the marquee fights of the night uh, for my money uh, could be fight of the night. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I do have to mention uh, Stephen Disjardins. Uh, he has been over there training at Young's. He's uh, formerly of Team Irish. And uh, he's had, I think, six or seven fights as an amateur uh, for NEF, but hasn't been in the cage for a couple of years. He will be fighting as an independent. Um, tell me a little bit about how he's been looking in there and, and what you're expecting uh, out of Stephen uh, Saturday night. Um, you know, Steven's a tough kid. Like, he comes in with a lot of experience. Um, you know, he's he's been he's walking around pretty much at the weight, so he's not going to have to tax his body uh, to make the weight. Um, you know, he's coming in as an indie fighter. You know, he, he's he he's been cross-training with us quite a bit. Um, not quite enough to say that necessarily he's a young fighter, but uh, I'm going to be helping him out. Um, he's a good kid. I'm excited to see what, what happens in this fight. You know, uh, I believe he's fighting Dylan. Um, Dylan Henry. D Dylan Henry. Tough kid. So um, it'll be, a, uh, you know, an interesting comeback fight. Should be exciting. Nice. Now, obviously, Glory Watson, the NEF flyweight champion, is making the transition down to 115 pounds, and she's fighting Lynn McMillan, uh, who is from Canada. Not a whole lot of tape on her. She's still relatively new. What kind of a, of a fight do you uh, expect this to be stylistically? Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you know, she's kind of a mystery right now. Obviously, uh, you know, coming in with an 0-1 record, you know, we've been catching a little heat for that matchup. Um, but at the end of the day, it came down to this. Um, either you fight this girl or you're not fighting. Uh, Matt is putting in the work. He is trying to get these fights. Um, anybody that is doesn't believe that doesn't know what they're talking about. 
because uh, he he he's he's getting the fights that that Glory needs. Unfortunately, uh, the girls just weren't interested in, in fighting her at straw weight. Um, so for this fight, uh, for me, one of the big pieces of this um, this fight was actually the weight cut. Um, you know, I didn't care as much as of what fight was at the other end of of it as much as is Glory making the weight um, because obviously this is a, a big drop in weight for her um, and. I want to make sure that she can make the weight healthily because I think this is a better weight class for her. Um, so that re really was kind of the big piece here. The big thing we were working towards is making sure that she could do it healthily, um, be strong throughout camp, um, make the weight, rehydrate properly, all of that type of stuff, and then get in there and perform. So as it turned out, you know, going in there with maybe a girl with a little less experience might be good just to kind of see where Glory's at with the whole process. She's been nailing it. Her weight is on point. Uh, she's super disciplined. Um, she's doing what needs to be done to do it right. And she's been super strong throughout camp, which is crazy given the amount of weight that she's actually dropping. But she hasn't had any problems in her camp whatsoever. I got to imagine moving forward that 115 pounds has got to benefit Glory, especially as she goes into the pro ranks. Do you expect to see maybe more finishes from her now that she's going to be fighting smaller girls? And, and, you know, her past fights, she's been fighting girls larger than she. I think it will definitely help. Um, I think the other piece, too, is she's starting to come into her style. You know, it's, it's tough. Like when you're, when you're first uh, starting out, um, your styles are changing, you know, there's different strategies to camps. It's a different way we're trying to, you know, I might want her to hold back on this fight because we want to make sure that she's learning how to pace herself, whatever. Um, so a lot of times it's not even just, because I think if I just had unleashed Glory in some of the fights, we might have gotten some finishes uh, early on. But we wanted to make sure that she's developing as an athlete and she's learning how to uh, manage her, her uh, you know, pacing in fights. She's not just kind of going out there and going nuts. Um, so there's been a little bit of holding back on my front to making sure that she's, she's learning the way to be an actual fighter. Um, but I, I think, yes, I think you're, you're definitely right. I think given um, how well she's performed fighting heavier girls, when she gets in there with girls, her size, I, I think we're going to start seeing some finishes. Yeah, I would, I would imagine. Brutal, brutal finishes. <laughs> I would imagine so. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing her uh, at 115 and what that looks like uh, as far as translating into the cage. I got to ask you, too. I've had a lot of fun this summer watching Contender Series, and Dana White is just handing out contracts like nothing. I think 30 something contracts were, were handed out uh, th throughout the summer on Contender Series, and it just seems like it's a, it's a really great way to kind of you know, become a star or get your name out there, or even if you don't get a contract initially, if you fight well enough or you go back and you put a couple of string, a couple of wins together, they bring you back. Is that something that, that we might see Glory doing? I, I talked to her before and she, she wants no part of, uh, you know, the, the tough house, but contender series seems like it's a, it's a great Avenue. Is that something you could uh, imagine seeing maybe in 2020? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's uh, interesting because the road for women is a lot different than the road for men. Um, there's a lot of different avenues and generally the road's a little shorter. You know, a, a female athlete can put together four or five wins, you know, win streak and probably be getting the, uh, the call. Uh, a 145 pound man going to have to put together some impressive fights uh, to be able to get that call. I think the contender series is a great avenue for any athlete. Um, it'll be interesting to see how her, pro career goes you know we have to be careful because that's one of the things where she's still developing we're still growing her as an athlete i mean as a fighter so we don't want it to be too fast we want to make sure that if she does get to the next level she can stay at the next level getting to the next level isn't so hard for a woman it's you know being competitive and staying there that's the challenge so we want to make sure that uh, she's ready for that step would, would you imagine that at some point in 2020 that she is going to turn pro? Is that, is that what you're forecasting, what you expect to happen? I can tell you right now how, what, what the plan is. The plan is, is uh, we'll have one more uh, amateur fight, hopefully for the straw weight um, title, if things go well, um, fight. And then really, no matter how that fight goes, as long as you know, there's no injuries or just a really terrible performance, we'll be going pro. Does the NEF have a straw weight women's champion right now? Uh, as an amateur? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Do they as a pro? No. Okay. So she could be the first. We're hoping so.
Very cool. Very cool. I, I also got to I got to mention Eric Tainter. Uh, he has a fight and he's been in there working, working his butt off for quite some time now. Uh, and he originally uh, was supposed to fight someone else. Uh, his name um, is escaping me right now, but he is now fighting Zach Richards, which is a, a big name, someone uh, who, you know, very well. Um, this is this is the fight that they wanted to, to make. I mean, how, how does how does Eric feel about it? How has he looked so far in camp? Well, you know, this was a kind of a special circumstance uh, situation. Um, you know, Zach lost his opponent. We were having some trouble with medicals getting cleared for, for Eric's opponent. Uh, so to make sure that the fights were going to happen, um, this fight kind of came together. Um, it wasn't an easy fight to, to jump in. Um, Eric did fight uh, years ago, um, well before he started training with us, um, and he lost that fight. Um but the thing with Eric is Eric is probably one of the toughest guys in the gym. Uh, the guy's been just kind of, uh, you know, grinding for years now, training with, you know, all the killers in the gym. Um, so it was really easy for him to kind of fly under the radar. And recently I was like, you know, Eric, you've been in here. I was like, do you want to get in there and fight for us? And he said, yes. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So, you know, I felt like we got a fight for him um, that made sense. That fight obviously isn't going to work. So Zach Richard was a possibility. And um, I talked to Eric about it. And I was like, listen, this is a very, very big step up in competition for you. He didn't hesitate. He was like, I like a challenge. Let's do it. So um, Eric's a gamer. Um, this is an exceptionally tough fight. You know, I'm not going to sit here. And I, I didn't sugarcoat it with him either. This is a tough fight. Huge step up in competition. Better come in shape and be ready to fight because Zach because Eric will bring it. He's not going to back down. Um, so Zach better be in shape and be ready for, for a fight. What will this uh, fight, uh, what will the weight be at? 55. 50. What does Eric walk around at? Because he's a pretty fit guy. Yeah, I mean, I think he probably walks around uh, about 180, 175, 180. Um, you know, he's on point. His weight looks really good right now. Um, so he's, he's right on, uh, on par to make it. Nice. Well, that's that's good to hear. I'm excited for that fight as well. And, and who knows, maybe Eric can uh, shock some people here regionally uh, with a big win. And then that could put him right, uh, you know, maybe in some sort of talk about another big time fight moving forward for an amateur title. Who knows? Um, Chris, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I, I'm really looking forward to this Saturday, NEF 40 in Orono. Uh, are you expecting a, a large uh, group of, of Young's MMA fans there to support all your fighters on, on fight night? Oh, absolutely. The support we have in this community is amazing. So it's going to get loud in there.